Oh, there we go. I'm Chris. All right, let's talk about things. All right, so we're going to head over to our uh, Warrior Horses site. And uh, the Warrior Horses, you know that they've uh, been working on a lot of interesting things lately, and they want to start a whole new team site, you know, so they can spin up a quick team site and get some things going on it. So we're just going to create a new team site here. Doopa doopa doo, team site right there. And we're going to just call this, uh, I don't know, uh, surveys and stuff. That sounds great. Surveys and stuff. What a beautiful name. We're going to create that. That's going to go ahead and create our Office 65 group. We're not going to add anybody to it just yet. We're just going to finish here to get our new site. And we're going to let that bring it in here, and it's going to prompt us for some site templates and all sorts of stuff. And uh, we'll probably pick one just to make it look a little prettier than that. So we'll let it uh, finish up here. We're going to hit Browse Templates. Of course, we can always have our own templates. So if you've done some of that, you know, you got some from your organization over here. You've got like a special template. Uh, but for this case, we'll just do uh, the uh, onboarding team. That sounds really great. The idea here is, you know, these templates give you all sorts of fun things like some lists, starter lists, sometimes formats or web parts already configured. Uh, it can be a great way to do it. And again, if you want to get your own, uh, that is an awesome way uh, to help people set up their sites really quickly and get a few assets they need uh, right off the bat. All right, so here we go. Now we've got ourselves a lovely site. Now I've gone ahead and created a couple of lists on some other sites, which I'm just going to copy onto here so we can take a look at them, and then we'll jump into what the formats are actually doing. So let's go ahead and create a list, and we're going to say a list from an existing list. There we go. That way I can pick one that I've already created. And I happen to create that on the old, uh, what was it called, poll test, as you do. So we're going to create a poll list. Poll sounds great. We'll just create that and let that go here. And we'll take a look at what's in here, and we'll create a test entry, and then we'll add our other list. So by default, we've got a configuration view. We're going to switch over to our standard view. So you can see our poll, all right, so all we're trying to do is just ask some people some basic questions, right? This is a configurable poll is the idea. So let's add one here. Uh, so you can see we just have this idea of a title, so we'll call this our weekly poll. That sounds exciting, right? And our question is, uh, what? No. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I've got my Alexa alerts going off here. All right, so what is a best way for murder? And that sounds great. All right, so option one would be, you know, uh, grenades. Uh, and option two, we'll just call that, uh, I don't know, tanks. That sounds great. That's good enough for now. The idea is we just wanted to create one here so we can have an entry and then we can have this idea of this configuration view, right? So this is only ever going to have one item in it, right? So as a result, we've removed the new button up here. This is where we want to provide a kind of on the rails editing experience uh, for the end user, right? So you can try and create a, a power up form or you can work without list form, uh, but you may want to consider actually using view formatting to create a very, uh, like I said, on the rails editing experience. So right here, we've got this idea of I can add an option, right? So I didn't like grenades and tanks. I want to add one here. I can just edit it. You know, we'll call it elephants. That's great. All right, so we can save that. This idea, we can move things around. All right, we can move them up and down. We can remove options we don't want. And we can also pick our colors here. So we've got a color picker. All right, so we want to use this uh, beautiful red here, or maybe over here in their grenades. We want to use, you know, what our theme color still. Uh, we'll use this darker blue. And then we'll just grab one more just for fun. We'll do a, a lovely yellow for the elephants. Okay. But the idea here is I can create, again, this editing experience. They can edit everything right here. It's more of a what you see is what you get, all right? It's not that form. I could show only the options when they make sense, right? So if we don't want option elephants anymore, we just remove it and so on. We'll come back and take a look at how we did some of that. But for now, let's add a whole other list because having just a poll doesn't do a whole lot for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new list here, again, from an existing list off my other site. Now, all of this is a sample, so all the formats and lists and everything are available to you on our si sample site. I'll show the link to that in the end. Let's grab the poll responses here, and because it's going to add that silly space for me, I'm going to go ahead and create so my URL isn't messed up here. And then I'll add that space back in right here. So we'll just add a space back in. We gotta love that. Oh, bonk. There we go. There we go. We got our lovely poll responses. And by default, we're on the My Response view, but let's just go to the All Items view. And this was pretty straightforward as well. Um, at least it feels that way. So this is gonna say 
response from Chris Kent. Or let's, let's call this the uh, unconfigured. This is our unconfigured item. We're not going to put a user. We'll put a poll here, and this will make sense in a moment. They just here, if we save that, now we have this idea of a view that is put on here, and this view has, um, it's my response, so it could show either where the user is yourself or it's empty. Right now, we don't have anything for, for ourselves, so what we're doing is we're automatically showing a message here about the poll not being configured. That'll look a little better if we add that to a page, so let's do that. So let's come over here to our page here. Uh, we'll edit this page right there. And let's, uh, well, the first thing we do is, who's this lady? We don't need this lady. That's not a horse. All right, so this is not important to the demo, but it uh, makes me feel better. All right, so we're just going to grab, uh, oh, I could have just saved, changed that image, couldn't I? But that's all right. We'll just do an image here. We're going to upload one from our machine. We'll hope that uh, we're in a good folder here. All right, we're in a good folder. All right, we'll do the scary horse poll. And we'll give that just a moment here. Perfect. I'm going to add that image. Much better. Now we're now we're now we're looking like a, like a horse site here. But maybe say up here in this section, uh, maybe we want to edit this section. I'm going to just remove the uh, the section background because that does not play well with the list web parts. And I'm going to add a list. And the list, I'm going to add my pull responses. This is where I get that my response. I'm going to take away the command bar and the see all button. I'm just going to change this to poll. There we go. And now if I apply that. The idea here is, you know, I haven't gotten an entry yet, so now I just see this poll is not yet configured. But let's go over here and configure that. Oh, not that guy. Let's click on the, uh, oh, let's republish this so we can play with that a little bit. Yes, I'm ready. Do it. Perfect. All right. So let's go back to our uh, poll responses. Let's open that in a new tab so we can refresh this one. And let's create an entry for myself. And then I'll show you how we're going to do that automatically for everybody else. All right, so let's go over here and let's create our initial one here. And in this case, we're going to say responses from Chris Kent. There we go. And that's me. Woo! There we go. And we'll pick our poll again. It's always going to be the same one for our case here. But now that I have a response, all right, there's not actually anything responding. But if we go back here and refresh this page, there we go. We should see that we no longer have our uh, message up here about it not being configured. Now we actually have a way to fill this out, right? What is the best way for murdering? Well, that's definitely elephants, right? So we pick elephants that goes and updates our response, right? And it's recorded that we're elephants. And if we go and change that later, uh, we could have new polls and this will automatically update with that and we'll be given the chance to respond again. So pretty, pretty exciting. And then we'll take a look at one more factor here. And that is the idea of uh, how we're doing this with the formats, right? and why we're doing this and, and so on and so forth. All right, so let's take a look at that configuration one first. I just want to point out a few things. Again, it'll be easier if you go through the format yourself as it is kind of big. Let's make this a little bigger, shall we? Well, I'm not sure why I decided dark mode all of a sudden, but uh, that's exciting. All right, there we go. So a couple of things I just wanted to point out in this format uh, is that we are doing a lot of inline editing, right? So that's this idea of when you click on this, right? SharePoint just takes care of it for me. I can, you know, what's the best way for murdering? And I can add a G if I decide that's the better way to say that. All right, let's press enter. Um, and that's done pretty easy. Uh, all we really need to do is we're going to say our down here, like on our question right here, we just say inline edit field and we specify that field and it's automatic for us. It just understands that when you hover over that element and you click on it, go ahead and provide the standard editing interface. So that's awesome. But we're also doing some pretty fancy stuff here where we're moving options around and so on. Now we're not actually reordering these, we're actually resaving these values um, in option one, option two, option three, uh, underlying things there. And the way we're doing that is if we scroll way down here, uh, we start to see uh, some of these fun things. So this is our color picker. Now let's take a look at the color picker. Actually, I'm gonna skip the color picker because I wanna show you the other thing and then we'll come back to our color picker. Where is my, oh, all right, here we go. But the idea, is someone talking? <laughs> nope. Just having fun there. Okay, but you can see right here, we start to do set value. And the nice thing about set value is we can specify multiple columns at once to update, right? So we can also do pretty fancy logic here. We could just specify a column if we wanna do that or a value like this or a full on expression, which allows us to really, again, provide a very on the uh, rails experience for the end user. We know when we can delete, we know we can move things up and down and when we wanna add options, right? So if we actually delete elephants, for instance, we get this add an option. Right, and we can add that right back in. 
you know, we'll say uh, ferrets. Perfect. Okay, so that's part of that. Now let's take a look at that color picker we glossed over briefly. So that's this guy right here. And the thing to note with this is I've not created an element for each one of these. It would take forever, and this format would be, you know, I don't know, 3,000 lines long. We don't want to do that. So what instead what I've done is a trick here we've seen before. I've created just one element per color, and I've split them across a for each. So I'm saying for each, split it with each one of these colors that I want to do. And then with those, I can just use this color iterator as a magic value where I can actually use those in my set my set values to set the color to, to that color iterator and so on as they pick them. And I can also tell when they've picked them. So check that out, but that's a great way to, uh, to add some nice functionality again, kind of that on the rails, exactly what you want. All right, let's move on and look at a couple other things here. So let's head over to our whole responses list and take a look at that format. A couple of things we want to point out here on this one is again, this view is filtered using that special me command, if you haven't seen that before. Uh, when you filter your view, you can say where a person field equals me in this little square brackets, and it's going to automatically be dynamic, which is cool. All right, but if we format that current view, one of the things we want to note is, again, we're hiding that new button up here, but then when we get down here, we're using what's called the row index. So the row index is the order in which your rows were drawn or rendered to the screen, and the row's going to start at zero. And so one of the things we're doing here is we're saying anything over the first one, just don't show it. Right, so if you get more than one result here, we're just actually hiding the element, right? So it's actually returning two elements here because we always have that empty unconfigured. And what we're doing is if you're the first element, right here in the unconfigured, right? So we've got this here, where we're gonna show it and we say our uh, row index, yeah, I don't even remember where it is. The idea here is if, it's, if the row index is zero on this one, we're gonna show it. And if it's not, then we're gonna hide it. And that again allows us to have that idea of providing a default item when the item we're looking for, when we're looking for a specific item, doesn't come up, which is pretty cool, pretty exciting. The other thing we're doing um, is behind the scenes is we want a calculated column, and we'll come back to that in a moment. But the idea is sometimes you want a calculated column that isn't actually a calculated column or isn't even possible in the normal way of doing a calculated column. And we'll take a look at what that looks like here. So when I vote on this, if I vote for grenades, for instance, and then we take a look at those all items, we can see right here, we have this custom field. And the reason we're doing this is normally you cannot take these projected fields or additional fields from a lookup and use those in calculated columns. But because we're doing the set value, we can build our own calculated columns this way. And by doing this, I can actually then group on that field and then break it apart. Uh, we don't have any uh, entries here with uh, that match our current uh, piece here, but this creates a, uh, let's edit the current view to make sure we've got the iteration set correctly. And you can see that exciting results view. Let's go down here, make sure we got the user column and we wanna say that the iteration is greater than or equal to zero. And again, if you read through the, the read me on that, that part a little makes sense here, but the idea is my results. So I have a one vote for grenade, right? I'm grouping that. And the idea is this is a progress bar that will grow as we get more responses. And we're doing that by separating that, you know, I'm putting in quotes, calculated column out uh, but do some string manipulation on here. We could have multiple results and we can easily see this and again, place this on a page as well, which creates an entire whole application and we're all good to go. The only other piece that's missing is it would be nice that if someone got added a team, they automatically got one of those entries. And so we're gonna do exactly that. And so what we're gonna do is here, we're just gonna go to Power Automate and we're just gonna try and describe this. So when a horse is added or removed from an office, 365 group, look up the user's profile, and then create create a list item in SharePoint. Let's see if it understands them horse references here. How smart is it? Say, ah, it's smart enough to understand. We mean horse, we mean a user. So here we go, and we just hit next. And what it's going to do is it's automatically suggesting uh, this flow for us. And then we're gonna go ahead and pick our group. So what do we call that group? We called that uh, surveys and stuff. And then our site is of course, surveys and stuff. And then our list is our poll responses list right there. And when we create flow, we're gonna let the AI do some magic for us and put it in this very pretty looking uh, interface here. All right, so now we can see that our group is configured right, to pull in from surveys and stuff. It's gonna go ahead and get that user profile for us using the user ID it retrieved, you know, from the 
member that was added. And then we're going to go and create this item. And the only thing we need to do is make sure we specify our title and our user and our poll. All right, so we hit those. And so we're going to say our title is responses from, and then we'll just say the display name, display name, and then our user claims. We're just going to do our custom value here. And we're going to put in the uh, UPN, right? The user principal name. And then our poll ID is always weekly poll. And that's it. And when we save that. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm not going to test it, but I promise it does work. And the idea is it'll automatically create that entry. So when someone gets added to the team, if they go there immediately, they'll see our, hey, wait for a minute while we configure your poll. Um, and then, you know, within a few minutes, they will have that entry and they can go ahead and start filling out the poll. And so it's all automated and it's a nice little application. And quickly, let's ramp it up so David can do his final slides here. A couple things here is the wow. So when you're editing things, there's two different options. So inline edit field, super easy. Um, it's just going to be SharePoint's going to do the magic for you. If you really want some power, the set value is going to let you set one or more values, and you can use those expressions. Oh, yeah. And then finally, uh, I didn't show you, but in there, I actually create a little reset button. So this is a tip I use a lot when I'm testing, especially a lot of things that require you know unique use cases. I just create a little extra button that I hide um, in my format that just set the at, set the input um, or set the uh, the set the value on a bunch of different columns, so I get the exact input I want. So that's a great way to kind of debug things. And then uh, there's the rest of things covered. Last thing to say is that sample is available. It is live as of about 10 minutes ago. The team poll sample and review samples. If you want to check out all those formats, and that's all I got. Woo.